Hello, I'm David Gelsthorpe. I'm curator of Earth Science Collections here at Manchester Museum. So that means I have a really varied role. So obviously we have the public facing side of it with all our amazing permanent galleries, our dinosaurs and everything. Uh, but we also have lots of temporary exhibitions that we change every now and again and have all sorts of amazing stories. There's quite a long history at Manchester Museum. The collections first started around the 1820s. We didn't start on this site here at Manchester University, but on a different site right in the middle of Manchester in a place called Peter Street near the current Midland Hotel. And it was quite a big rivalry actually between the local Natural History Society and the Geological Society. So the Geological Society, they wanted their collections to be open to everybody in the museum. So their part of the museum, they didn't charge and the local Natural History Society, they wanted a slightly more select group of people to come and look at their collection. So they charged, and there was always quite a bit of toing and froing about who the museum was for and, and what they actually did. But over time, a lot of local natural history societies across England, in fact, particularly in the north of England, they very often went bankrupt. They were quite an elite group of people who frequented these museums, and they couldn't really keep the money going sustainably. So in a lot of places like Leeds and Sheffield, for example, the local authority purchased the collection and built their local authority natural history museums. But in Manchester, it was quite a different story. They just built the fabulous Manchester Art Gallery. and Really, they decided they'd used all their money on culture. When they brought the collection from Peter Street in Manchester, they literally wheeled it down Oxford Road. They reorganised the collection. So from being a kind of gentleman's cabinet of curiosities, a jumble of all sorts of really interesting things, they reorganised it into a taxonomic and scientific collection. And that was so they could use it for research and teaching and be thoroughly integrated into Manchester University. Some of my main highlights of Manchester Museum are actually on display in the galleries for everybody to come and look at and some incredible things. We're really well known for things like our mummies and our dinosaurs, but one of my main highlights is our fossil tree. It's absolutely incredible specimen. Found near Clayton, near Bradford in Yorkshire in 1896. It was a quarry that was mainly for footpaths and uh, building stones. Uh, and they found what looked like a modern day tree stump with roots kind of radiating out. So at the time it was described as one of the finest specimens ever discovered in the world and the curators got really excited about it. They heard on the grapevine this incredible specimen had been found and they kind of hot-footed across the moors up to near Bradford, took their wives with them and we got incredible photographs in the archive of the wives sat on slag heaps with their big Edwardian hats but the specimen is amazing as well. It's 300 million years old, and it represents the time when we had coal swamps across the whole of the north of England. So that's when we got the coal forming, but obviously eventually went on to power the Industrial Revolution. So I think really lush forests with these giant trees and in inverted commas, which are actually more closely related to mosses. But we also had incredibly high levels of oxygen in the atmosphere at this time, about 35%. It's about 20% today. So the oxygen, along with the moisture in the atmosphere, really fueled rapid evolution of some quite weird things. So we got gigantism in things like insects, massive dragonflies and roughly a metre wingspan, incredible objects that we've got in the collection that show this. Things like amazing millipedes, scorpions, but also uh, we had some reptiles which, which grew really quite large. So amazing time represented by still one of the most amazing fossils of its type anywhere in the world. Another amazing specimen in the collection, which is often quite hidden, is our piece of rock which represents the Cretaceous tertiary boundary, which is the point where most dinosaurs became extinct 66 million years ago. It's a little bit difficult to find in the gallery, but if you do a little bit of hunting, you can see an amazing story told within the layers of this rock. So most of it is a creamy coloured limestone, but about two thirds of the way up, you see this grey, muddy layer. And the grey, muddy layer represents when the bolide, the either asteroid or meteorite, hit what we now know is the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, where they've subsequently found about a 10 kilometer crater. And so it's an enormous crater in northern Mexico that had global impact and eventually caused an incredibly large mass extinction which killed most of the dinosaurs. 
So as you're looking at the different chemicals going up through this rock, there's a chemical called iridium, which has a really high spike, a really high concentration within this gray, muddy layer. So naturally on Earth, we get really low levels of iridium, so incredibly difficult to detect. But within this gray, muddy layer, we have what we call a spike, a really high concentration. And that's because there's a relatively high concentration in extraterrestrial sources. And this is the kind of golden bullet that shows us this is where this meteorite has hit the Earth and the sedimentary record is recording it just here. And obviously had incredible consequences for kind of nuclear winter, terrible storms, cutting out the light and killed a lot of life, particularly within the seas. One of my favourite stories from the meteorite collection here at Manchester Museum is this incredible one just here. This is the Apley Bridge meteorite. So this is a plaster cast of the original, which fell at 8.45pm on the 13th of October 1914. And it was seen for a really long distance right the way across the UK, right from Hull direction, across Halifax and then towards Liverpool and it eventually fell a place called Apley Bridge near Wigan. So really local to Manchester. So incredible that we get these amazing things right here in the UK. Most of this meteorite is now at the Natural History Museum in London, but I'm really excited to say we have a small fragment here at Manchester Museum. So it's really interesting to see part of the main meteorite. Meteorites are very often kind of split up and broken up to do research on different bits. But this is really beautiful piece of meteorite, around 4.5 billion years old, around the beginning of the solar system. But it kind of shows the quite stony texture in the middle and the, the kind of burnt, really thin outer crust right on the edge of the meteorite. One of my favourite stories about meteorites is how they've been used to date the age of the Earth. If you use rocks that are on the surface of the Earth, some of them are very ancient, but they get recycled on a fairly regular basis over hundreds of millions of years through plate tectonics. So chemicals within the rocks, isotopes which degrade from one chemical to another chemical over a set period of time, they get recycled in plate tectonics and effectively it sets the clock within the rock back to zero. So you can't get an accurate date for the age of the Earth from rocks on the Earth. So to get an accurate date, you need to look to an extraterrestrial source, which is meteorites. The meteorite they've used to date the age of the Earth is a meteorite called the Canyon Diablo meteorite. It fell in the US, in Arizona, in a place called Canyon Diablo, and we got a fantastic piece of this meteorite just here. And it's a really good example of why museum collections and big collections are really important for dating the age of the Earth. In museum collections, we have lots of examples of the same thing, and that kind of doesn't really seem logical in, in lots of ways, but to get really high quality data and high quality information about, in this case, the age of the Earth, you need lots and lots of samples to have a really low error rate. Canyon Diablo was a meteorite that fell into thousands and thousands of different pieces, and Lots of samples have been taken from the chemicals within these, and it's given uh, a date of 4.5 billion years old. And shockingly, this accurate date of the age of the Earth was only achieved in 1956. So really, really recently, we've only just been able to manage to get a really accurate date of the age of the Earth. Before that, there were wildly different examples of, of guesses of how old the Earth was. So meteorites have really come to the rescue. And this date has been verified with other samples, for example, from lunar meteorites and lunar samples from the Apollo missions, for example, that have confirmed this is a really good, really accurate date that they've got from Canyon Diablo meteorites. We're going through a really big change at Manchester Museum at the moment. We're undertaking a £13.5 million redevelopment project. So in the short term, that means we've kind of reinvented ourselves as a natural history museum where the geology galleries were open and all our other incredible natural history like our whale and all sorts of other amazing things that we've still got on display. But part of the museum is closed around where we're doing our big building project. So on the ground floor, we're building a massive new temporary exhibition space for incredible special exhibitions. So we'll be able to showcase the best of our collection here in Manchester 
get incredible objects from around the world and other exhibitions to say the best stories that we could possibly do in a way that we've never seen in the Northwest before. And on the first floor gallery, we're doing really pivotal partnership with the British Museum, the largest outside of London so far. So this will be focusing on the South Asia communities. We'll be looking at amazing collections from the British Museum, our own collection, and really working very closely with communities from across the Northwest to tell lots of really hidden stories about what their culture means to them and showcasing some amazing things from that part of the world. So Manchester Museum's got a fantastic array of galleries that are open to the public. We're open every day, 10 till 5. We've got loads of things you can come and see. Come and see our T-Rex, our whale and all sorts of other things, including lots of activities and events. So the place to have a look at what's going on is Manchester Museum website. So do have a look there and we'd love to see you whenever we can get to the museum.